Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We welcome you. We welcome your presence in this temple, in this house, God. Fill us up, hallelujah. Fill us up, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Put your hands together again to welcome the Holy Spirit in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Hallelujah. I would like to welcome our Bishop, Bishop Taylor, this morning. Put your hands together for Bishop Taylor. Hallelujah. We welcome First Lady Reverend Aloma this morning. Put your hands together for her. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome all the ministers. Let us put our hands together for the minister this morning. Hallelujah. And everyone in the congregation, we welcome you this morning. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone this morning. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. And I hope you feel welcome this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to do our devotion, and I ask you to turn your Bible to Matthew 5. can stand, I will ask you to please stand up for the reading of the word of God. We got to honor the word of God. God deserves all honor, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. When you find it, just say amen, please. Amen. And we're going to be reading Matthew 5, verse 1 to 12. Amen? Amen. 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 Here go the reading of God's word. And see it, the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciple came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Praise God. That is a good word right there. Um, I'm going to just read it one more time. Verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they... Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they which are prosecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are he when men shall reveal, revile, revile, thank you, congregation, revile you and prosecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so prosecuted they the prophet where which where which were before you. Praise God. Praise God. I'm gonna read that one more time. The devil is trying to, you know, mess up my speech this morning. But in the name of Jesus, verse 12. Amen. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so prosecuted they, the prophet, which were before you. Praise God. And I thank God for his word this morning. There's so much in here. There is so much in here. And this right here, as we know, the Sermon on the Mount. And so much is in here when the, God, when the word of God tells you, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Praise God. Blessed are the poor. So if you're feeling down, you are blessed. Hallelujah. If you feel an outcast, you are blessed. The Lord is not saying blessed because you're poor. A poor person out there. He said in spirit. So if you're feeling some type of way in your spirit, the Lord said you are blessed. So we claim our blessing this morning. God, I am blessed. I am blessed this morning, God. I am blessed because I may feel 
morning. We thank you that you reminded us that we are blessed, oh God. You reminded us, oh God, that it doesn't matter how we're feeling in our spirit, oh God, because sometimes we do not feel like we need, we want to do it. Some days we don't want to get up, God. Some days we don't even want to pray, God. Some days we don't want to go to work, God. Some days we just wake up and don't feel like doing anything, God. But you said you are blessed, God. And we thank you for speaking your word unto us, God, that we are blessed this morning. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in this house this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, oh God, for everyone that is coming after me, God, to take part in the service, God. I pray that you have blessed them, Lord Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will remain and abide in this temple, God. I pray that you have blessed the word this morning as it come forth, that it will come with power, with clarity, God, that it will do what it's called to do in the name of Jesus, oh God. Unable. 
But if you're able, we invite you and we're encouraging you to come out and feast on the word of God. Amen? Praise God. This coming Friday, we have our prayer service and our youth night as well. Both will be going on at the same time at 7 p.m. So bring out your youth. Praise God. Praise God. We will also be fasting during the day from 9 to 12 noon. Amen? Amen. And then we end here at 7 p.m. in our prayer service. Praise God. Next Sunday, the 13th, our bishop will be preaching, praise God, in Philadelphia. Praise God. It's a youth, the youth annual day, and he will be preaching at the 20th Street Church of God. Praise God. 6114 North 20th Street in Philadelphia. The host pastor there is Bishop Audley. Thompson. Amen. So if you're able to come out and support our bishop as he brings the word of God. The service begins at 5 p.m. Amen. Amen. So that will give you a little time, but well, more than enough time after we have our service here in the morning to go home and freshen up and have dinner with your family and then join us at 5 p.m. in Philadelphia. Amen? Amen. August 26th, we will be having our family fun day. Amen? It's going to be held right here on the church grounds in the parking lot here in the rear where you park your cars. Amen? So the 26th, it will be from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Praise God. We'll be having Mr. Frosty giving out free ice cream. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. We'll be having some hot days. So come out and receive. Amen. Some free ice cream. And also we'll be handing out back to school supplies. Praise God. And we will have barbers on the premises to give free haircuts to the boys. Amen. 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 Praise God. We want our young men to look sharp. Praise God. You want them to look like gentlemen going back to school. Praise God. Amen. It promises to be an exciting time. There will be music and much fun. Amen. So please come out from 12 to 2 p.m. here at 35 Garden Street. Amen. For Mount Holly Family Fun Fest. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to join at 7 p.m. via Facebook for Mighty Mondays. Amen. It is hosted by the First Lady of our state of New Jersey, Dr. Lorna Birch. Praise God. It is a wonderful time. It's a very powerful time. It's just for half an hour from 7 to 7.30 p.m. So join as we share effective prayer principles from the Bible. Praise God. Praise God. Don't forget we have our chaplaincy and mobilized training program. Praise God. They begin, I believe the, let me get the flyers here. The chaplaincy program begins August 31st and it runs through September 2nd. Praise God. The flyers are in the back with further details and you can also visit the state of New Jersey Church of God website for more details as the cost and also the registration dates. Same with the mobilized training development program. Praise God. Amen. One last announcement before I move on to our offering. Our Sunday school books uh, which you know that we study from. Bishop doesn't have his Sunday school book here with him. May I borrow yours, Reverend Anderson. Thank you so much. It's the Evangelical Sunday School Lesson Commentary. Praise God. The last lesson here in this book is August 27. Amen. We have ordered additional copies. So they are on their way. So we can have them for September. 
which will be that month is the when we uh, have our begin our new church year. Amen. They are twenty dollars per copy. Amen. They have already been ordered. So if you would like one, you can reserve your copy. Praise God. Amen. 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 It is time to be blessed. Won't you stand on your feet? Praise God as we do as we receive our offering and tithe. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's a joyous time to give. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. As you're standing on your feet, praise God. The scripture that we use here for our offering is Malachi chapter 3. Praise God. And we'll be, our focus scripture is from verse 10 through to 12. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there will be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the, vi nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful in the land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen? Amen. The scripture gives us a command, praise God, to give 10% of all our increase. So whether your increase come from a job or somebody may bless you with an offering, whatever it is. The word of God commands us that we give 10% of all our increase. Praise God. Praise God. Some people might be saying, you know, I'm not giving my money to the church. You're not giving it to the church or the people of the church. It's a command from God. I didn't say it. It is in the Bible. It is a command from God that we give 10% of all our increase. Praise God while the offering is free will. Whatever the Lord has birthed in your spirit to give as your offering, that's what we give to the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Praise God. And along with your regular offering, if you choose to bless the other ministries here at Ebenezer, please indicate that on your envelope for those who are in-house, praise God, write a little note that if you wish to bless the evangelism and outreach department, if you wish to bless the women's ministry, if you wish to bless the youth ministry, please indicate that on your envelope. And for those who are giving online, praise God, we have many ways to give. Praise God. You can indicate that when you give online you may do so by cash app our cash app uh, tag is dollar sign ebenezer f w c c o g and you can also give by zell which is 609-283-6798 and if you give through those electronic mediums you can also put a note I do believe, I'm not really tech savvy, but I do believe you can put a note as to where your offering, where you want your offering to go. Praise God. Amen. You can also write a check to Ebenezer Family Worship Center, Church of God, and you can mail that to 90 Beach Nut Court, Lumberton, New Jersey. Praise God. And you can put on the memo line of your check, whether it's your tithe, whether it's your offering, or you want to bless a particular ministry here at Ebenezer. Praise God. God loves a cheerful giver. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to pray, and then our usher will come around and receive the day's offering. Let us pray. God, we thank you. God, we worship you. God, we praise you. You're an awesome God. 
and we just love you today, God. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not just for what you've done for us, God, but for who you are. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are our keeper. You are our strength. Hallelujah. You lift us up, God, when we are weak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are our Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. You're an on-time God. Hallelujah. And we just worship you and we just praise you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your people, oh God, who have gathered in your house, Father. And we thank you, God, for those who have joined us electronically. Hallelujah. You have kept us. Hallelujah. For the week. Hallelujah. And you have brought us here in your house for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for those, oh God, who have obeyed your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And are giving, oh God, to the furtherance of your kingdom. Hallelujah. So many, oh God, who would want to give. Hallelujah. But do not have to give. But, oh God, we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, they may be saying in your hearts, I have, I don't have much. Hallelujah. But, Oh God, you said that we should bring what we have, oh God, into your house, oh God, and prove you now, hallelujah, that you will not open up the windows of heaven, oh God, and pour out a blessing on your people, oh God, that we may, will not have room, oh God, to contain it tonight and this morning, hallelujah. We bless your name and we just thank you tonight. Bless the offering, oh God, and the tithe today, God, that is going to be received into your kingdom. Continue to bless your people and to provide for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to hand over to praise and worship. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Are you willing to give with a cheerful heart this morning, right? We're going to sing this song that just says, sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Because we're giving cheerfully this morning. Amen. Anybody believe that? Anyone going to give with a joy? Hallelujah. The song says this. Sing praises, praises unto God. God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises.
but let a man examine himself. And when you examine yourself, you can eat. Praise the name. What is mighty God? Praise the name of the Lord. He's given us a way out. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's examine ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. And for those that are watching online, praise God. I want you to just get some juice and a, a piece of bread. Because when we pray, it's going to be transformed into the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want everyone of us, praise God, to examine ourselves. We may have left home and on the way something can happen on the way. In here our thoughts may be drifted somewhere. But we're going to pull ourselves together. And we're going to examine ourselves this morning. As we partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. This is such a solemn time. Praise the name of the Lord. Remembering Jesus. Remember that old rugged cross. That he was hanged. Oh, publicly in front of everybody on Golgotha's hill. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So that the world could see mm -hmm. him hanging there. Oh, glory to God. Hung like he was a thief. Oh, glory to God. But it was for us mm -hmm. this morning. Jesus. And as we partake of his body, praise God. His body that was marred. Like no other man has been in what Jesus has been through for us. It was so marred. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. His, 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 his sweat become as drops of blood. That's how he was. He suffered. He, he suffered for us. And this morning, as we looked at what he has done, let us examine ourselves. Let us just pray in our hearts this morning that the Lord, praise God, will just take away anything that is will make us unworthy to partake of his body and his blood. And this morning you can partake if we examine ourselves. Hallelujah. Father of heaven, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sin. God, we repent before you this morning. We ask you this morning, God, that you will wash us. I pray that you'll purify our hearts. Remove things from us, God, that should not be in our hearts, in our thoughts. Oh, God, let us be worthy this morning of taking your body on your blood. For you said, God, if we, we should not take it unworthily, but make us worthy this morning, God. Father, that it will be a blessing to our bodies. That it will bring healing and deliverance to our bodies. Oh, God, some of us are walking around with disease in our bodies. We don't know, God. But this morning, God, as we partake of your body, as we partake of your blood, that you, God, will remove every sickness, every ailment, every disease, God. In the name of Jesus, purge us this morning, God. Wash us and make us clean. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let your hearts be worthy this morning of your body and your blood in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And this morning, hallelujah, as you examine yourselves and you find yourself fit to partake of your, the Lord's body and his blood this morning, you may come forward, praise the name of the Lord and receive, praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Receive the body of Jesus. Receive his blood this morning. Praise God. And we're going to eat together. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to partake of the body of Jesus. We're just going to remove the, the layer from the top of this sacrament this morning. Praise God. And the word of God said, praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. This is my body, which is shed for you. As often as you do eat of it, you show the Lord's death till he comes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise As often as you eat it, as we eat the body of Jesus today, we show for his death. We recognize the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was not an easy death. Oh, bless God. 
but God saw it fit for his son to die in our stead. He took away the death and he gave us life. So as we eat of the body of Christ this morning, we are eating life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is my body, Jesus said. As often as you eat it, you will show forth his death until he comes. Eat ye all of it. Let's eat together. Praise God. Same manner, we're gonna remove the layer from the juice. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. And he said, For often as he do drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice this morning. Hallelujah. That we are partakers of the Lord's body and his blood. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you this morning for your body. We praise you this morning for your blood. Oh, God, that we are worthy this morning, God, to partake of your body and your blood. I pray, God, that as we go for it today, almighty God, that you will strengthen us as we go forth during the week, God, that you will strengthen us, Father. Oh, my God, that you will bless us, uh, Oh, God, I will rejoice in you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you have died for us and that you have given us life and given us so much more abundantly. Bless us all today in the name of Jesus. And for those, God, who do not find themselves worthy today to take partake of your body and your blood, I pray that you will touch their hearts, touch their lives. Oh, my God, make yourself known unto your people today. In the name of Jesus. So on the next occasion, God, that we do this, that they too will be ready, oh God, to be partakers in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free.
to magnify your name. My God, had it not been, oh God, for your goodness, had it not been, oh God, for your grace, oh God, and for your mercies, God, would have been consumed a long time ago. And so, Lord, as we come, Lord, this morning, we want to lift you up, we want to praise you, and we want to magnify your name. Father, we pray this morning, Lord, that as we gather, Lord, that your will, God, will be done, oh God, in our midst. My God, as you have so ordained it, oh God, for today, I pray, God, that, Lord God, it will be done. Because, God, we know, God, it's not by my God or by power. My God, it is done, God, by your Holy Spirit. So let your Holy Spirit, Lord, take charge this morning. Let your Holy Spirit, God, breathe upon us, oh God, this morning. Let God, your Holy Spirit, God, minister, God, unto us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because we know, God, that you are that spirit. That wherever God, your spirit is, there is liberty. Wherever God, your spirit is, there is deliverance. And we pray, Lord, that it will be done today. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is no God like you. You are God, our Jehovah Jireh. You are God, our Jehovah Shalom. My God, and we give a thanks this morning. You are God, the will God in the middle of the wheel. And we praise the name this morning. We magnify your name this morning. You are the mighty God and you are the Prince of Peace. You are God above in Gilead this morning. And we just want to thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. We thank you, God, for your blood, God, that was shed for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the glory, God, and we give you all the honor, God. And we magnify your name, oh God. Continue, God, to have your way, God, in us individually. Continue, God, to have your way, God, in this ministry. Continue, God, just to do, God, as you please. So that your name, God, can be glorified. So that, God, your name, God, can be lifted high. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Lord, have your way, God, and do, God, as you please, oh God. Have your way, God, and do, God, as you please, oh God. Lord Jesus, you release, Lord, your fire, God, in the atmosphere. Yeah. Let your Holy Spirit, God, consume, yeah. God. Every working, oh God, of the adversary, God. Every principality, oh God, in high places. My God, our spiritual wickedness, oh God. Every opposing spirit, God. Let your Holy Spirit, God, consume, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy God the works of the enemy, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because he has no place to God in our name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your fire God burn God this morning. Let your fire God burn God this morning. Let your fire God burn God this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we come God in the house of God to worship. As we come God in the house of God to praise. Let your fire God come to you. Wherever God, the enemies are all God. We chase them down with the fire God this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let your name God be glorified. Listen to 
me this morning. Listen, I was watching the Women's World Cup. Uh, they call it soccer in North America. But uh, all over the globe, they call it football. And I can see where when the, the teams won, or when the teams went through, when it was either South Africa or the reggae girls, or it was the United States, when they scored a goal, the stadium erupted. Yes. And this morning, this oh, afternoon, yes. rather, we are in the presence of the king. And if God woke you up, if he put breath in your body, if he clothed you in your right mind, I don't want to pump you to praise this morning, but I want to ask you this morning, if you enter those gates with thanksgiving, and you came into this court with praise, if you will lift up a praise unto God. Hallelujah. I think we're just in a rehearsal, Reverend Jason. Let's do this one more time. Because if the governor walked in here, uh, if the president walked in here, if somebody else walked in here, I would have erupted in applause. But this morning we come to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God who is able, the God who woke us up, the God who strengthened you when your back was against the wall. When you didn't know what to do, when sickness fucked your body, when the doctors could have find what was wrong, when you were down and out, isolated by friends and family, it was the same God, hallelujah, who stepped in right on time, it was the same God who worked on your behalf, it was the same God who gave you a miracle. And this morning, all he's asking, uh, the Bible says in Psalm 150, it says that everything, that everything, oh glory to God, if you are breathing this morning, if you are breathing this afternoon, if you can go, oh, if you can inhale and exhale, it is enough to give God praise. Oh glory to the name of Jesus. I thought you would have been lifting this roof off of the noise with a praise from the very depths of your belly. Hallelujah. 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 I wish I had some blind Bartimaeus in the house this morning that in spite what was going on around him, in spite people saying, listen, uh, you have no significance. You should just sit down someplace. Sit yourself down. Oh, blind Bartimaeus, the Bible says, he shouted the more. The Bible said he shouted even louder. His praise got elevated. Hallelujah. And if someone has been trying to shut your praise down, circumstances have been trying to shut your praise down, won't you just lift up a Shabbat to the God? Won't you just give him a praise out of the depths of your belly? Won't you just give him a praise this afternoon uh, that the Mount Holly can't stand? Give him a praise that will raise this roof and to give him glory. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. I feel like I'm the only excited one in here this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome the presence of God in this place. We welcome His Holy Spirit who is already here. And we bless His name this afternoon. We give Him the glory and the honor. We give Him the praise because He's worthy. Hallelujah. God, it is because of you. Why I'm living this morning. It's because of you. When I'm breathing, when the enemy said yes, my God, you said no. When the enemy said yes, God, you blocked the accident. You blocked the sickness. God, you blocked the tragedy. You blocked the trauma. God, you blocked the mind breakdown. You blocked, oh God, the aneurysm. You blocked the cancer. Oh God, you blocked the death. You block, oh God, a financial situation. And so this morning when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed and I have a testimony. Is there anybody in this house this morning? Anybody that's joining us online this morning that has a testimony that God has been good? Hallelujah. When you look back from January to now in August, the sixth day, the first Sunday, can you look back and say, God has been good. Yes. If it wasn't been for the Lord on my side, yes. where would I be? Amen. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. Amen. You know what amazes me? I don't want you to sit yet because you're going to be sitting for 
for a while unless you start jumping in your feet and praising God. You know what amazes me? When we go to work, my brother, we fear the boss. You, you got your own business, so you're the boss. But when we go to work, we fear the boss. We jump at what the supervisor says. Yes. We make sure that we cross our T's and dot our I's. Uh -huh. We make sure that we are correct. We make sure everything is in line. And you know the thing about it, Pastor Marie, is that some of these bosses, they treat us like doormats. Yeah. They talk to us anyway. They are talk to us condescending, Pastor Jack. They talk to us in a way that makes us feel small. Sometimes we don't want to go back, but when we think about the bills, when we think about taking care of our families, we rush back tomorrow morning. Would it be snow? Would it be rain? Would it be hurricane? Would it be wind? Unless it's a state of emergency, we get up out of our comfortable beds and we go back to the job. And we're still on the grind, Sister Nanny. But this morning, the God of the universe, He woke you up. When you went to sleep last night, you were just like dead men in a cemetery. But he woke you up this morning, even without the alarm clock. And you took your time to put your clothes on. You took your time to get dressed, to have a shower, to make sure you drove here or you walked here. And at the same time that you took, I want to encourage you, just as though you went to work and did the job, Come here and don't shortchange God. Just start praising Him. Just start blessing Him for who He is. Just start lifting Him up because He's worthy. Just start magnifying His name because He is Jehovah. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the I Am That I Am. He is Jehovah Jireh. He provides all your needs. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is a God who heals. He is Jehovah Shapur. He is my shepherd. Hallelujah this morning. He leads us besides to the waters. Hallelujah. He restores our soul. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this afternoon. We magnify him. Because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Listen. Listen, I could go crazy all day just praising God. I could just go crazy because when I think of where he brought me from. Oh, Reverend, just when I think about what he took me through. I don't deserve it. His favor is unmatched. Everybody in this room, if I start telling you a bit of my testimony, you may just write me off and don't come back to 35 Garden Street. Or you may not want to come back in my presence. But when I think about some of the things that God hid for me, when I think about some of the places he took me from, when I think about some of the obstacles he took me over, I should have been dead. When I was gyrating in the clubs, uh, when I was hanging on the wrong corner with the guys with the guns, uh, it was God. Yes, hallelujah. I, I, I should have been remembering. Oh, hallelujah. I should have, my name should have been on a tombstone already. But God. But God. But God. So when I start shouting, when I start making some noise because of what he has done, it's not because of a Sunday morning. This is not just a Sunday morning thing. Every day. Every day. When I think about what God has done, I have nothing but praise for him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of... I feel, I feel good in my spirit this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, the song says, sing praises unto God. Sing praises. When trouble in your life, sing praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and sing praises. Hallelujah. I don't want to preach Psalm 150 today, but it tells us that everything, oh, whether you're a dog or a cat, whether you're an insect or a spider, whether you're an alligator or a snake, once you are breathing, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. And if you don't know what praises is, praises just compliments.
obedience unto God. You see, when I can look at my life and say, sweetheart, you're beautiful. I love your hair. Your dress looks so fine. And you, your shoes are just matching. That's compliments to her. And it's the same thing we do with God. When we can say, God, I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you this morning. God, you're just awesome and wonderful. Thank you for your glory and your favor. Thank you for your blessing this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for remembering me. Hallelujah. Nobody, but yet still, God, you took me from nothing and made me into something. That's praises. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. We praise our spouses. We praise our children when they do well in school. Uh, we praise our friends and our neighbors. We praise other people. But when it comes on to God, we, we shortchange him. We shortchange him. We shall change him. And God is saying, listen, I need my praises. And here's a funny thing about it. I'm going to ask the children to stand. If you are able-bodied, if you have two feet, we're in the presence of the Lord this morning. If you're not sick in body, I'm going to ask you to stand, to rest on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know the reason why? Let me just teach you something real quick before we get into the scripture and the sermon today. When you go into the courthouse in Mount Holly or Willingboro or New York City or you go into the Supreme Court, I don't care who the judge is. Whether it's, it's, it's Judge, uh, I don't remember her name, she's the one presiding over the trial for a former president. She's of Jamaican heritage or father and mother of Jamaican and Caribbean people. And whether you go to the courthouse in Trump or Cape May or Atlantic City, unless you are physically unable Unless you are physically disabled, right. you have to. When the judge enters a room and the bailiff says, the honorable such and such pastor, you have to stand. Or else you're in contempt of court. Let me just teach you something this morning, Ebenezer family and friends, and those who are watching us. Do not take the presence of the Lord for granted. Do not take the presence of the Holy Spirit from the babe in this room to the age. I'm not the oldest and I'm not the youngest. But from the babe, the youngest in this room to the oldest. I'm going to encourage us today. Not you, us, including myself. Do not take the presence of the Lord for granted. When the Holy Spirit is moving, be mindful. Yeah. When you're in the presence of the Lord, the Bible tells us that we should keep our very feet silent when we enter the house of the Lord. Yeah. And I'm saying to the young and to the people who don't want to be called old today, but the seniors and the middle age and the adults, the matured, thank you, Pastor, the matured, that's the best word to use, the matured. Respect the presence of the Lord. Respect the presence of the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, one of the uh, minor prophets, even though he was Isaiah, but there are a few major prophets in the scriptures. The book of Isaiah chapter 55. And we are going to be reading from the New Living Translation. You, your Bible may not have that. You can follow on the screen and you can follow in the Bible. But we're going to be reading from verses 1 through to verse 7. The book of Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 1 to verse 7 from the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. It says, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. That's right. Even if you have no money. Come take your choice of wine or milk. It is free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me. And you will eat what is good. Now this is God talking through the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me. And you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. Verse 4, see I, how 
I use him to display my power among the peoples. I made him a leader among the nations. You will also will command nations you do not know. And peoples are known to you will come running to obey. Because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious. Look at God. Verse 6, seek the Lord while you can find him, or seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to your God, for he will forgive generously. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, Amen. Let us pray. Father, as I come before you today, I pray that you will remove all flesh and all carnality. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus, that Father, that you will speak to us boldly from your word. God, open the hearts of your people this afternoon. Open their ears, and not just the physical ones, but the spiritual ones, to hear what you have to say. Let from the very babe to the aged in this room, and those who are watching online, God, understand the very concept of your word. Understand the very depth of your word today. And we pray that no one will leave this house the same way they came. But God, at the end of the day, that they will be matured. They, oh God, will be built up and furnished to Father. They, Father God, will be strengthened, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise and honor, and we give you glory for these things. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Before you sit down, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you are invited. Come on, let's say it with some conviction. You are invited. Hallelujah. You are invited. You may be seated in the house and the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the short span that I have before you this afternoon, and I won't keep you long, I, I want to take time out to recognize some visitors who are among us. There are some folks who are visiting us for the very first time. There are some folks who are here for the second time. And we want to take time to recognize them in our presence. We also want to say uh, welcome back to our pastors, Pastor Winston and Pastor Marie, who have been away and uh, they're back with us today. And we thank God for them today and thank God for traveling mercies. We have one of our sisters who's away, Sister Jackson. She's on her way back with her family on today. We thank God and we pray for coverage for them on their way. Hallelujah. I want to take time out to welcome our first time visitors. I'm going to ask you to stand or a second time visitor to stand in the presence so we can recognize you today. If you're here for the very first time or the second time, we're asking you to stand. We want to welcome you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. While you're standing, I just want to say welcome to you all for being with us today. You could have gone anywhere else to worship. Well, you chose to be with us, and we pray that you already feel welcome. You'll be welcomed by our sister, Lady, who did praise and worship, and uh, our First Lady Pastor Aloma echoed that, and I'm echoing it too because we are excited to have you in our presence. If you're joining us online, uh, our online family for the first time, be welcome, feel welcome, and uh, we thank you for being a part of us. Before you see, be seated. Can you just say what your name is and let the, the congregation know? We, we want to know who we want to know you. Hallelujah! If you can just say what your name is. My name is Annette. Our sister Annette is good to have you. Yeah. My name is Roberta. Sister Roberta is good to have you. That's right. Mother. Mother, it's great to have you in the house today. That's our brother Amar's mother. Uh, his great grandmother. It's great to have you in our in the house today. Amen. A star one and a mother in the church, a prayer mother. We we welcome her. She's visiting. But today we also have our brother Miguel Adams. He's not here with us today. His family is here, uh, but his mother is here with us today. And we just want to let's give let's, let's, let's give her a hand for both mother and grandmother in the house. And, are you, are you his sister? You're his friend. Well, well, welcome, Sister Roberta. Friend, we, we are glad to have you today, too. Oh, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are invited. That's right. You are invited. You see, today's 
day, whether you're having a party, whether you're having a get together, uh, we have just passed graduation season in June, and so we find that there were a lot of people who got invitations to graduations, uh, and there are a lot of people who went. One of the things that we have found out with invitations is that they can be very formal or informal. Invitations are things that are sent out in two ways. They are sent out because one, you can either invite a person to a place or a person to a thing. Amen. You can either invite a person to a place or a person to a thing. And so when you're invited somewhere, we're living in a day and age where because of our economy and because of economic crisis and because of how financially uh, 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 depraved we are sometimes in the society around us, sometimes when we get invitations to different functions, the invitations cannot accommodate the entire family. The invitation, of course, sometimes it's just an adult invitation. So if you're invited to a wedding these days, the cost is so high that you can't invite everybody. And so the invitation is for adults only, no children. Or it may be, the invitation may just be for children for a birthday party. The invitation or the invite may just simply be something that says, can we get a representation from the family? one representation and so when we talk about you are invited the first thing we want to ask is what are we invited to uh, when we look at the book of isaiah chapter 55 what we see is that we have a inviting god uh, amen. hallelujah amen. we have a god who is invited here is what god says because the word invited has two meanings, as I said earlier. You can say this spot is invited, which is a place. Uh, it can be pleasant and attractive, and you feel drawn to come there. People have visited places before. Back in the day, people have invited people to visit countries. So the fact that I live in America, if I have people who lived in Canada, or people who lived in Africa, or people who lived back in the Caribbean, then I would send them a letter or I'd send them a, a postcard inviting them to, for a vacation, okay. inviting them for a wedding, inviting them for a baby dedication, inviting them to a church opening, inviting them to a dinner. Amen. So you're invited to an event or to a place. You see, the thing about the invitations that we receive, they are restricted as to who can come. The thing about the invitations that we receive, they are restricted as to where you are invited to. I look at TV and I see where people are invited to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. People are invited to celebrity parties and people are invited to different events that are official invitations. And unless you're on the guest list, as a matter of fact, there is a list at the door that someone is checking. So even if you weren't invited and you decide, because these days there are people who just pop up and crash stuff, Pastor. They crash weddings and they crash parties and they crash your Sunday dinner and they crash your Saturday evening event. They did not get an invitation. So what they do is that they have a list at the door and they are checking the list twice to see whether you are naughty or nice. They are checking the list to make sure that your name is written down on the list. You are invited. The Bible says that in Isaiah chapter 55, God is inviting us to come to him. You see, when you get an invitation, it's usually, can you come or we're inviting your presence. It's calling you to somewhere or to something. Uh -huh. And what we see in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 is that Isaiah wrote between verse 1 and verse 7, there are seven times when God used the word come. God is calling us, calling the children of Israel to come. I'm going to give a little background. 
the time we have under Isaiah the prophet because we're going to look also at Jesus and how he has invited us to come. Isaiah wrote this 700 years or over 700 years before Jesus was born. And what Isaiah was writing in Isaiah 55, he was talking about the Messiah. He was inviting people to salvation. I'm so glad that God is not a restrictive God. You know why? Because when I look at John 3.16, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that whomsoever will. On our invitations, it's restricted to Reverend Jason and Sister Nadine Smith. Specific. But I'm so glad that when God is inviting us, it's whosoever. It's not restricted by your last name. It's not restricted by where you're from. It's not restricted by your family. But it's whosoever. I don't care if you're broke, busted, or disgusted. You could be the rich man in purple or Lazarus that the dogs lick the sword. God is inviting you. Whosoever will. Come. Amen. The wonderful thing and great thing about God is that he is invited in both these ways to a place and to a thing. Hallelujah. Let me put this in context for you. You see, back in Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah described an amazing detail over 700 years ahead of time before Christ would come and suffer and bear the sins of God's people and die in my place, in your place. Hallelujah. To rise again for our salvation. Oh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. If you read that, it talks about the suffering servant. It talks about the servant who suffered for our sins. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. Oh, glory to God. And carried our sorrows. And it simply says, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was pierced or bruised for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our chastisement of our peace was up on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. You're invited. When we look at verse 8 of Isaiah, what we see is that by oppression and judgment, our God, our Savior was taken away. And the Bible says that his generation was cut off completely. Cut off from the land of the living. But I like what God does. Because in chapter 53, we can say that the prophet Isaiah sees the work of redemption as accomplished in the death and the resurrection of Christ 700 years in the future. I want to stop by here to say that God has a future for you. Yeah. You have a future in God. Whatever your present situation is cannot be compared to what God is calling you to. Whatever your present circumstance is cannot be compared to the future that God has for you. Because Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, says God. I have plans of peace and of hope and of a future, not a disastrous one. You're invited. Isaiah 54. The prophet foresees some of the great blessings that will come to God's people because the Messiah has overcame the problem of our guilt and our sin as was described in chapter 53. And then this leads us. It leads us today, mother, to the great invitation of Isaiah chapter 55. Right. You see, if redemption is already accomplished, and God's will is that the blessings of his redemption is to spread to all the nations, then it does not surprise us that God comes forward with a great invitation, not just for a few, not just for those who can pave your way, but for everyone. Yeah. I want to break down Isaiah 55 verse 1 to 7 for us today about the great invitation and that you're invited. The first thing Isaiah points out to us is 
who is invited. The answer tells us in Isaiah chapter 1 that there are two sets of people who are invited. Here is what it says. Come, everyone who thirst, come to the waters and he who has no money. So the first person who is invited is a broke people. If you are broke, busted, and less gusted, God is calling you. Uh, then he says, you have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So the second set of people that he's calling, mother, he is calling the thirsty. Oh, our sister Nadine with a beautiful devotion this morning from the book of Matthew chapter 5 when she stole one of my verses of reference. I let to show that the Lord was confirming his word. Uh, verse 6 simply says that Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Uh, but there's something about the invitation. When God opens an invitation to any man, woman, boy, or girl, there simply has to be a hunger on the inside. you got to have something that you are thirsty for. And I thought, thank God, when David wrote in Psalm 42, he said, as a deer panted for the water brooks, so my heart longeth after you, O oh God. I call upon God in verse 2. Am I so thirsted for God in a dry and thirsty land? There ought to be a hunger on the inside. There ought to be a hunger, my sister, that money can't fill. There's a hunger inside of us that sex can't fill. There's a hunger inside of us that popularity can't fill. There's a hunger inside of us oh, that no form of intimacy can fill. There is a hunger inside of us Amen. that it doesn't matter how many likes we get on Facebook yes. or on social media, it cannot fill us right. because there's a vacuum in us that's created to worship. Yes. And God is inviting us to the table. Yes. He is saying, you are invited. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you were strung out on drugs. I don't care if you have a broken marriage. I don't care if your family is falling apart. I don't care where you are in the depth of hell. But there is an invitation that has been sent out to your house that you ought to come. Come without money. Because you know what? I'm so glad that God is calling the broke, busted, and disgusted. Because if God was just calling those with money, only Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos that own Amazon, only Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg who own Facebook and Twitter or the X, as they call it, only the rich and famous could go. Oh, but I'm so glad that one day I was on a dump heap to nowhere. One day I was a nobody. And God took this dump heap, broken, busted person who was far away from him. And he said, you don't have to have money. Your bank account doesn't have to look good. You don't have to have a status. But I'm sending an invitation to your house because I've prepared a table in the presence of your enemies and I need you to come. You are invited to the first set of people in Isaiah chapter 55 is a broke, busted, and disgusted and the ones that are thirsty. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So you've got to have a thirst. There ought to be a longing. There ought to be something on the inside. In the book of Psalm, David cries out, I believe it's Psalm 63. Or in Psalm 63, he simply said, listen, he said, early in the morning, would I go to the sanctuary and seek God? My soul crieth out after God to see his power and his glory. Early. There is a hunger on the inside. There is a longing for God. Oh, glory to God this morning. Some of us are longing for a partner because we want to get married. Some of us are longing to get to high school because we want to jump from middle school. Some of us are longing to get to college because we really want to leave home and we don't want to be in bondage. We think we're fenced in somewhat. Some of us are longing to get to the new job or the new position. But I come to tell you this afternoon that I pray that God will create a hunger on your inside so that you can long after him. You can look after him so you can put the phone down, put the iPad down, turn the TV off, and just sit in his presence. A longing, a longing to cry out. Then the next person that Isaiah is calling to God through Isaiah 
is a self-sufficient. Because you see, God does not only invite the poor and the busted and disgusted. He does not invite only the thirsty. But he's talking about the self-sufficient. Oh, glory to God. Here is what. I'm glad because I think that the rest of us who don't feel like we're in the cat in, in that category of being broken, busted, and disgusted, and thirsty, we probably fit into this one. If we're honest with ourselves, when we look at verse 2 of the book of Isaiah, here is what it says. Why spend money on food that does not give you strength? Why? Why spend money on food that does do no good? You will enjoy the finest food. Here's the thing about it. If there's one thing in our economy today that's rising more than anything else, it's a cost. Check the last time you went to Walmart or ShopRite, or you went to Lindo, or you went to Acme, or one of those Aldi's, or one of those food stores. Check the last time you went to Food Bazaar or Fresh Down Supermarket. Check the last time you look at the price of the meat, or you look at the price of the items you buy for your house. Compare it to next month. Do an inventory. Yes. Check it. And the next month, you go back and look at how the price has increased as gas increases. Check it. And Isaiah is saying to us, God is inviting us to a place where we don't need money. You can get rid of the wallet. He doesn't want the credit card. He doesn't need your cash. He doesn't need your iPay or your Samsung Pay. He doesn't need your Zelle or your cash app. He doesn't need your, your, your PayPal. God is saying, I want you to come get some food yeah. which will feed your spiritual soul. Yeah. Because you see, it's easy for us. Food costs money. Yeah. Come to that price. Food costs money. But here's the thing about our physical food. It lasts only for a time and meets only physical needs. Yeah. But God is offering us free nourishment that feeds yeah. our soul. Yeah. How do we get it? God is saying that you got to come. I'm inviting you. And listen, this invitation is not restricted to just one person. This invitation is not restricted just to a representation from your household. This invitation is to whosoever. Welcome. Uh, you see, there can be an invitation sent out. And I'm glad about this because here's what invitations do. When the invitations are sent out, there's an RSVP date. Yeah. It's a reserve placement reserve. date. It means that if I'm invited to a wedding in October, the RSVP might say, you ought to make sure we get your response by August 25th. So there's a cut off date because we gotta rent a hall, we gotta provide food, we gotta make sure that we cater to the number of people. We wanna know the number that we are working with. There is an oh shata robo kikano mamacha. There's an RSVP date on your salvation because some people are SVP on their deathbed. Some people are SVP when they're in an accident. Some people are SVP when they're sick. Some people are SVP when their backs are against the wall. But God is saying now, today is a day of salvation. I'm inviting you to come. Some people have missed their RSVP date. And sometimes, here's what happens in the physical. When the date has passed for August 25th, we simply call the person, Pastor Marie, and we say, listen, I know the date has passed, but can you fit me in? And sometimes, Pastor Loma, the answer is no. The hall is already full. Shut up. No, no, no. Do not let God shut the door on you. Do not let God shut the door on you. When he's beckoning at your heart and when he invites you to come, do not let God shut the door on you. There is an RSVP date on your salvation. You are invited 
here's what Isaiah says. God is asking us to do three things. We are to come. We are to listen. And seek. And call upon God. Mm. Yeah. Come. Seek. Listen and seek. And call upon God. Yeah. Yeah. Because God's salvation is free. But to nourish our soul. We must eagerly receive it. It doesn't matter how much free things you're giving out. People got to come get it. That's true. Uh -huh. Most things that are free are not delivered like Grub Hub or, 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 or any other delivery service. Or Uber Eats. Or FedEx. Or UPS. Most things that are free, mother, you got to come get it. You have to come get it. Amen. We're having a family fun fest in the, in the parking lot behind here on the 26th of August where we're going to have Mr. Frosty with free ice cream and snow cone and popsicle and everything on the truck. We're going to have free back to school gears and stationaries and everything and music and we're going to witness too. We're going to give out free literature right. to tell people about salvation. But in order for Mount Holly, Willingboro, Western East Hampton, Pemberton, Haynesport, Lumberton, Mount Laurel, to get it, they got to come. Yes. Yes, it. That's true. That's right. There will be no delivery service on that day. You got to come. Yes. And it's the same thing with salvation. God has already given Jesus on the cross. But in order to receive it, you have to come. Yes, that's good. Hallelujah. 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 You gotta say yes. You're invited to the cross. I like the songwriter that says, Mother, Grandma, it simply says, though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. You gotta come. So, the broke and the thirsty, the self-sufficient, God is saying, he who has no money, come. But in verse 2, he talks to us, or he talks to us who has no money, who has strength to labor. The first kind of person is spiritually bankrupt, and they know it. They are thirsty and broke, but the second kind of person isn't there yet. This person has money. And this person is spending it. This person has strength. And they are laboring. We are laboring for the goals of our life. We are laboring for the big house and the picket fence. We are laboring for the job that we desire so much. We are laboring for the husband or the wife. We are laboring for the children. We are laboring for the right neighborhood. And God is saying, where am I in all this labor? What have you done with me? I've invited you to come. We labor and the frustration comes and we are burnt out at the end of our day. We spend time working and dreaming and tracing and searching and experimenting whether with a different job or a new city, a new car, whether with a house or a different wife or a new computer or a new boat or new books or a new bike or a new phone or a new grill. New season tickets, new team, a new diet, new looks, new hairstyle or suit. And there's still a lot left in us, but we will not give it to God. And God has no place. And here's what he says. He says, the applause fades. The voting becomes boring. The style passes. Every new Gadget gets old and options get few and fewer. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can realize that no matter how self-sufficient we look on the outside, and God knows us even better than we know ourselves, that God is saying there's an emptiness on the inside that is drawing us to him. Then Isaiah said, what is offered to us? 
I want to talk real quick about the benefits of what's offered to us. Here's what Isaiah says. We are offered water, wine, and milk. And he says, come if you're thirsty. Come to the waters. I like what he said because Isaiah echoes John in, in the book of John chapter 4 when Jesus met the woman at the well. And she went there and Jesus said, I will give you water that you will never thirst again. You can drink this water of life that is overflowing from the inside. And so there are times when we are thirsting after different things. But God wants to give us the water that refreshes us. He wants to make sure that our thirst and our most desperate and hydrated places in our lives are saturated by the power of his spirit, by the power of his glory. When we talk about milk, as Isaiah said, milk represents nourishment. Uh, Peter said, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And when we have babies among us, the first thing that happens with babies is that you're either giving them breast milk or you're giving them infant milk. But you need milk for strong bones and teeth in order for them to grow. And it's the same way God wants to nourish us with his presence, with his power. Amen. So Isaiah says, come, take your choice of wine or milk. God has the best caviar. He has the best appetizers. Yeah, yeah. He has the best main yeah, course. Yeah. He has the best dessert. And whatever you desire, God is simply saying, I don't care what you're running after. I can give you better than that. Yes. That's right. Amen. But first, you have to come. Yes. You're invited to come. Yes. Oh, glory to God. He says, you're coming for milk and you're coming for wine. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You're coming for wine. Fine wine, fine dining. And here is what he says. He says, there are, there, are, there are 12 things that God simply outlines for us here in Isaiah 55. First, he says, come without money. Buy. Eat. Come, wine and milk, without money, without price. Why do you come? He says, come eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear. Come to me. You see how God is calling us? You see how he's beckoning to us? You see how he desires a relationship with us? Come to me, hear, that your soul may live. We didn't read to verse 12, but verse 12 says that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast love, like I did with David. God says, come. He's inviting you. The four things is come, buy, eat, and enjoy. And God is saying, you don't even need money for that. God is saying, listen, uh, you don't need card. You don't need, I think I got a dollar in my pocket. You don't need cash. You don't need none of that. You just need to show up. You just need to be present. I just need you. I just need your willingness. I need your obedience. I need you, your yielding. I need your submissiveness. If you will just come. Come and dine. Just come. And hear what Jesus does. In the Gospels, Jesus has similar instances where he simply says, come. In Matthew 11, 28, he says, come unto me. All that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In John 10, verse 37, he says, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He was echoing Isaiah 55. Jesus said in John 21, 12, he said, Come and dine. In John 1, verse 39, he said, Come and see. Uh, glory to God. In Mark 10, 21, he said, Come and take up your cross. In Mark 6, 31, he said, Come to a scheduled place and rest. And in Matthew 25, 34, he said, Come, you blessed of the Father, and inherit the kingdom. Jesus is calling you. He is inviting you to come. 
Hallelujah. And here's the other thing that he does. The eighth beckoning of coming is when he says, follow me. Amen. Do you know that Jesus' first instance with Peter, when he saw him by the shore, the first thing he said to Peter was, follow me. Come, follow me. The last thing, when you read the book of John, the ending chapters, when Jesus was by the sea and he was doing fish and bread for the disciples, and he says, Peter, loveth thou these more than me? Because Peter had gone back to fishing after the, 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 the resurrection and the crucifixion. And because Peter was such an influencer that everybody followed him. And Jesus said to him, Lovest thou these more than me? And he was simply saying to Peter, Do you love the fish more than me? Because he went back to fishing. And Jesus said it three times, and Peter got irritated. And Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Because there are some things in our lives where God is inviting us to come. But my brother, we love it more than coming to God. We love the attention more than God. We love the applause more than God. We love the communal life more than God. We love the sin more than God. We love the thieving more than God. We love the, the wickedness more than God. And God is saying, come. The spirit, oh my God, the spirit of the bride says, come. I want to close with this. The last call to come is found in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17 through 19. Oh, the spirit and the bride says, come. Let the one who hears come. Let the one who thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take the word of life without cost come. Hey, another answer. Come. God says, come. Come to my table. Come to the cross. Come to my presence. Come before me. God says, come. You are invited to come. But we have no excuse as not to come. The book of Luke 14 tells us that a man had a great feast. And when he had the great feast, Yolanda, you know what he did? He sent out invitations to everybody he knew. The Bible says that when he sent his servants out to say, what happened to the RSVP? Then come back. What's going on here? Oh, I just bought a field and I got to attend to it. I just married a wife and I got to go. Oh, I, my family is sick. Oh, somebody died and I got to go back. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Everybody had an excuse as to why not to come. And the man said, okay. No worries. That's okay. Spent his money, did all that. He said, go to the highways and the byways. Invite the beggar and the thief. Invite the broken. Invite the bruised. Invite all those who are outcasts and neglected to come. Invite the nobodies to come. Invite the low lowlifes to come. Whether you're struggling with your identity, God says, come. Whether you don't know if you're a man or a woman, God says, come. Uh, whether you are a beggar or a thief, God says, come. Whether you are in the dump heap, God says, come. Uh, whether you are transgender, God says, come. Whether you don't know what sex you are, God says, come. God doesn't care where you're at. He doesn't care where you've been. He said, come. I got a place for you. Come and dine. Come and eat. Come and live. Whether you're young or old, God says, come. He called Samuel when he was five years old. Josiah became king when he was eight years old. Samuel was called when he was in his teens. Joseph was in a well and called even before he got to the well in his teens. Caleb says, give me this mountain at 18. Age doesn't make a difference. Status doesn't make a difference. God is saying, come. The last call. So Revelation 22 verse 17. Now my time is winding up. I'm already past it. Just bear with me. But he said the spirit and the bride is come. 
This is the last call in the Bible. It is a final invitation. When we look from the New Testament, it is given over and over and over again. But here in Revelation 22 verse 17, it is the last call of God. The two actions in this verse are some of the simplest things a human can do. God says like in Isaiah, come and drink. He said what he said to the woman at the well, the Samaritan, come and drink that the thirstiness, because what's locked inside of us, Sprite can't fix it, Mountain Dew can't quench it, Coke will not fill it, my God, several up won't do it, but it takes the spirit and the power of God, water, where there's no substitute, can't quench it. God says, come. Come. Every child can come. Every man can come. Every woman can come. Every girl can come. Every boy can come. And Jesus is beckoning to us that we ought to come. You know the thing about a child is that when you have children in your house, even when they're babies and they're crawling, the Bible says, simply if you say come, they start crawling towards you. They're moving. But the people of God grow adults, people who call themselves children of God. God is beckoning to you, and you can't even walk forward to come. This is the last invitation to come. Whosoever will, come. John 4, 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give to him shall never thirst again. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well springing up into everlasting life. The promise is freely given. Water of life is only found in Revelation 22, 17, but also in 21, 6. I give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. The same is said of God in John 7, 37. He said, if any man thirst, come. Yes. It's a simple invitation. Just come. You don't need to remain thirsty. But here, it says, while the invitation is open to everyone, it's still just an invitation. One cannot be forced into salvation just as one cannot be coerced to drink. You can lead the horse to the water but you can't force it to drink it. Jesus died on the cross, strung out for my sins and your sins. Jesus bore a crown of thorns, nails in his hands, pierced his side, 39 lashes as Pastor Marie said during the Lord's Supper. This which we commemorate and celebrate it was his sacrifice on a cross. And he simply said to us, come. Gently calling, come. He's not forcing you. He's not compelling you. He's not pushing you. He's gently inviting you. You were invited. Come. Oh, glory to God. Come. Come. The spirit of the bride says come. He said, he that heareth, come. Six times in the Gospels and eight in Revelation, the Lord says, He that has an ear to hear, let him or her hear. Yes. This does not only imply our ears for are necessary for salvation, but rather the gospel is for everyone. Those who do hear and accept the message are to repeat it to others, and the gospel goes into the entire world. Stand with me today. Everybody in this room is somewhere in one of these four steps. And I call you to take another one this morning or this afternoon. I call you to look into yourself. If you're distanced from God, you need to come and draw near. If you're drawn near in recent days or just this morning, or hold back on any transaction, analyzing or appraising, you need to buy. I admit that it is strange, it's a strange transaction. There is no price and you're spiritually bankrupt. If you find yourself in that position, you gotta take water, you gotta take milk, as Isaiah said, and you gotta take wine. I count it yours, for he has brought it. Come. 
And if you are here this morning and you don't know what this is all about and you're saying, I've experienced life, I'm working on some things, but God is not in that thing. Come. And finally, if you have eaten and you delight yourself in the pleasure of his life and delight yourself in God and say with the psalmist, God, you have known my path and your presence in it, there's fullness of joy. Praise Psalm 1611. And you're saying, God, I need more from you. I'm not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Come. I'm inviting those online this morning. But I'm inviting you in the house. Only you know where you are with God. Only, Only you know where you are with God. And I'm saying to us this afternoon, your RSVP doesn't have to be in the deathbed. Your RSVP doesn't have to be late. The Bible says, today is the day it's of the salvation. Day of I'm talking to the young. I'm talking to the mature in this room. And I'm lying today. God is saying, come. Where are you with God today? If he should call you, are you at a place where you can boldly, honestly, step forward? The altar is open. We want to pray with you today. Come. You're invited to the cross, and I'm inviting you to the altar. Come. Amen. You're invited. Come. Hallelujah. Is there one that will say, let me pray for you today? You may not be where you are with God. You may just need some strength today. Come. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Pastor Winston Anderson to take this appeal for us and to pray for my brother here at the altar. If you're online today and you need prayer, call the number 609-283-6798. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. But you got to come. Is there anybody else in the house that says, I just need strength. I need covering. I need direction. Amen. Come. Amen. You see, that's the thing about an invitation. You're called, you're called, you're called, you're called. And then after a while, the openness to the invitation closes. This is an open invitation from God. Amen. Come. You're invited. Come ahead, Pastor. You have been standing, looking down a narrow road. Trying to find my way back home. I have wandered so far from God in sin. But that same road will lead me home again. If you're here today, that same road will lead me back to Jesus no matter how far my feet have drawn every road sign still points me back to Calvary it just seems longer when you've been so far from God Father, we want to thank you this afternoon that it does not matter how far we have trod. The invitation is open to come. Irrespective of whether we are rich or poor, the invitation is open, God of heaven, that we should come. Here is a young man before you this afternoon and those that are in line, you are no respecter of person. The word has gone forth. I am asking a mighty God of heaven that as your people open their hearts to your word, your word will bring a change into their lives. Your word will bring life, my God. It is not in your plan and your will that any should lose their way, but it's your will that all should come to you. No wonder you spoke and said, come now, let's reason together. And so, Father, we're asking you today 
that you will breathe upon your children, God, as they come before you at the hour of prayer. Touch their lives, God. Change their lives. Meet their needs. Bring a turnaround. God, bring a detour in their lives. That when their lives and earth is ended, oh God, they will not live with regret. Father God, we realize that there come a time when the door, oh God, of reality comes. The door will be closed. But while they have yet the time, this particular day, God, as your word has gone forth, we're asking you, my God, that you will turn their lives around that they will come to know you as their personal savior. We present your people in your hand today, and we are asking you, Father, that you will do for them what no other can do. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for the message today. The call has gone out, whoever won that thirst to come. Bless your people today, and let there be a change in life. We look to you today, Father, we give you praise for what you have done and what you have given to us. Yes. We do not take it slightly, yes. but we honor you for your word. Blessed today we pray. And as we are about to leave from this building, but not from your presence, we pray, God, that we will go with your people, cover them under your blood, keep us safe and secure, and help us, God, that we to give earnest heed to the things we hear today. Peradventure, we allow them to sleep. We bless you today. We honor you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Let the church say, amen. amen. God bless you watching our service. If this is your first time connecting with us, please take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also to follow us on Facebook. We hope that you were blessed by today's message. If at the end of today's viewing you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we would love to connect with you by having you email us at ebenezerfwccog at gmail.com. We are located at 35 Garden Street in Mount Holly, New Jersey, 08060. Or you may call us at 609-283-6798. If no one is available to take your call, please leave a voice message and someone will return your call. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may donate through Cash App at dollar sign Ebenezer FWC C O G or you may write a check to Ebenezer Family Worship Center C O G and mail it to 90 Beechnut Court Lumberton New Jersey 08048. We invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for refresh and refocus Bible studies and prayer. Join us here in person or via phone line toll free at 669-275-1668. God bless you.